the fact that there's a rise of flat earthers is evidence of two things. Okay. One. One. We live in a country that protects free speech. That's actually kind of awesome. And two. Uh huh. We live in a country with a failed educational system. Ooh, that one hurt. In this video, Neil deGrasse Tyson answers the question, is the earth flat? I'll have some thoughts as we go, of course. And then I want to know what you think in the comments. But without any further ado, let's tackle it together. So tell me, Neil, is the earth flat? We have video from space of the rotating spherical earth. The Earth is Round. Thank you for joining us on this episode. But what's, what's odd is there are people who think Earth is flat. Right. But recognize that the moon is round. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and the sun are all spheres. But Earth is flat. That's not, something doesn't square. Something doesn't there. jive, right? Okay. Plus, in my latest book, Mm. Ooh, did I just plug my Wait, book? your latest book is called Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. What? We just happen to have a copy <laughs> right here. <laughs> no, it just happens to me. I swear we didn't plant the yeah. book. I have an entire chapter titled On Being Round. Mm. And it's an, an exploration of how all the laws of physics and the accounting of energy as processes unfold in the universe, how that conspire to make things round. So it favors the sphere. Favors a sphere, yes. Right. And if it's something is not a sphere, it's a little bit flattened, you can ask what flattened it, and you find out, oh, it's rotating real fast. Right. So then it gets a little flattened because of that. Right. And so almost everything in the universe is either spheres or slight distortions of a sphere for some other thing that's happening to it. I mean, we can just see how the, the universe favors spheres. So it's nature. Right, basically, in nature. the universe. In all says, fairness to the people who want a flat Earth. Yes, let's be fair to those people. <laughs> okay. In Columbus's day, there was surely a flat Earth contingent. Okay? Yes. Columbus predates the era of experimental checking of any idea you might have. Not a lot of peer-reviewed studies no, back <laughs> until in, six, in the day. Or in the day. Back in the Not day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Kind of just like you just say whatever you right. felt. You know what? I believe that elephant poop will cure cancer. There you go. That's right. Wrote a paper about it, <laughs> like to read it, here it is, and you're good, right? <laughs> right, so it wasn't until, until Francis Bacon, uh, Galileo, in the 1600s, where the idea that if you're gonna say something and you think what you're saying is true, then no matter how obvious you think it is that it's true, you should still test it. Gotcha. There could be something fooling you in one way or another. So if you want to say Earth is flat, then, for example, lunar eclipses. What's a lunar eclipse? If your face is the brilliant sun. Thank you. <laughs> and this is Earth, mm -hmm. and the moon is over here. The sun is always casting Earth's shadow into space. It's always there no matter what. Right. Obviously, okay? It's just a shadow. It's a shadow. The moon it's occasionally just a shining on blackness. On, yeah, a shadow in darkness. A shadow in darkness. So, so the moon occasionally passes through that shadow, and if you see the shape of Earth's shadow on the moon, it is always round. Always round. If Earth were flat, sometimes you get like a flat shadow. Right. And we've never seen a flat shadow. Right. In fact, it is a segment of a arc of a circle no matter the orientation of the moon and the sun. And the only thing that makes a perfectly circular shadow would be something that's perfectly circular. Uh, perfectly spherical. Spherical, right. yes. Or as he mentioned at the beginning of the video, you know, we have, we have video evidence from space now of the earth and it's not flat. So the only thing that makes a perfect circle shadow every single time is a perfect sphere. Right. Okay? No matter what angle no matter you shot. Whereas a disc, it would only make a perfect circle if you lined it that way. Right. And so then you they, have to look at the face of the disc in order to get the circle. The circle. If, if any, you, other angle, any other angle, you get, other you get something of, of another The shape. Greeks knew this. Right. All the lunar eclipses had, they said, oh my gosh, we must be in a round earth. This is thousands of years. Before Columbus. Years before Columbus. Exactly. Right. So now if the earth is round, how big is earth? Mm -hmm. You might want to 
check for that. There was a famous experiment conducted by Eratosthenes. Tosthenes. Eratosthenes. Tosthenes. And the two cities in the old world, mm -hmm. and one of them, they knew that at 12 noon on a particular day of the year, that the sun was directly overhead, and you could see the bottom of a well. Oh, okay. You don't run around looking at the bottoms of wells. No. You Because the light doesn't take, it's just, no. It doesn't get down there. doesn't get down there. How can we use this observation to see if Earth's surface is curved? We need another well. Turns out we can't see the bottom of both wells at the same time. What might explain this? Well, there are two possible explanations. First, we could have a flat Earth with the sun that's small and close by so that the light hits the second well at an angle. Or second, we could have a curved Earth with a sun that's big and far away so that all the light comes in parallel, but only one well at a time is lit all the way to the bottom. Turns out with just two wells, there's enough wiggle room for both explanations to fit our observations. Eratosthenes only had two wells, but what if he had added a third? With a third well, it doesn't matter where the sun is. No flat Earth model can explain the angles of all three shadows. But the spherical model explains it all, all three angles, with ease. And to do this experiment, you gotta measure the angles. Greeks had the angles. Yeah. Okay, in fact, geometry translates to Earth measurement. So one last thing, which should be obvious, okay. if you pay attention and think about it. If you send a ship straight to the horizon, right. eventually it begins to disappear until it's no longer visible beyond your horizon. Right. And you should ask yourself, what kind of surface would produce that result? Um, the ocean? If, it, if it's con... The ocean has a ramp. <laughs> it's like a parking lot. And the ocean has a ramp. And it's an elevator. Yeah, it's an elevator. And then, uh, you, you get to a certain point, they just like going down. Seafarers knew this. Right. And so, what, however flat they would have imagined the Earth to be, they, they, couldn't, have, they couldn't have accepted it to be completely flat, because otherwise you would never not see the ship. Okay. Also, if I just tell you, Chuck, walk due east, okay? Right. And don't ever stop. Right. I just turn around my chair and face this way, and eventually you're going to come back. Right. And you'll probably be about 150 <laughs> years old, because I am no Forrest Gump. That is how long it would take me <laughs> to run the Earth. For me, the fact that there's a rise of flat earthers is evidence of two things. Okay. One. One. We live in a country that protects free speech. That's actually kind of awesome. And two, uh -huh. we live in a country with a failed educational system. Ooh, that one hurt. Our system needs to train you not only what to know, but how to think about information and knowledge and, 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 and evidence. If we don't have that kind of training, you'd run around and believe anything. 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 And if you're interested in learning more about the Earth, the Sun, and how the fact that we're hurling through space at, what, what, what is it, 17,000 miles per hour? Is that what we're going? Is, are did we you just moving? pull that number out of I your... I did. You know where I pulled it from. For those of you who are flat earthers, we say it's okay as long as you don't run NASA. And for those of you who are Greek philosophers and mathematicians, Neil will tell you what they would tell you, which would be... I don't know Greek, but if you could translate ancient Greek into English, they would say, keep looking up. Well, those two have a good rapport, and I think it's, uh, it's always fun to watch them. You know, this, was, this video is originally from uh, 2018, and you can find it on Neil deGrasse Tyson's Star Talk channel on YouTube. Um, highly recommended. Uh, they have lots and lots of videos, obviously. So this is not an overtly political video, but I do think it, it speaks to that almost willful spread, not almost, this is a very deliberate spread of misinformation and disinformation and the conspiracy mindset um, and how sticky it can be. You know, you hear something false again and again, and it can, it can you know, get stuck in your mind. And we're seeing this, you know, in politics almost as nowhere else um, in America today. So I think it's important to keep reminding ourselves. They're very nice about it, right? They're, they don't, they, they joke and they kind of wiggle their eyebrows, but they're not calling anybody stupid. They're not, they're educators. They're educators and scientists, so. Um, let me know what you think of the comments.